so this sort of combines um, the stuff I've done in the two previous videos. Um, it combines this analog front end for PT100 that's still down here on the table and this seven segment driver that's on this breadboard and it's doing this to um, control uh, the temperature of a water bath that's used for developing uh, analog film and yeah I just I put the processor here in the front end next to this I've had this as a design block in Eagle and we can just go over the PCB real quick and over this attachment that I made um, the case for this is currently on the printer you can maybe you can hear it in the background um, yeah but let's go over the basic construction of this this is not going to be that long of a video um, but yeah let's get right into it um, I'll just go from left to right. This is a Kingsbright seven segment display and it's hooked up just with a bit of ribbon cable to pin and header to a pin and header socket here. Which those are always a bit delicate, but I put them in so if you want to get this out of the case and um you don't have to disorder this because this to disorder this is an absolute nightmare. Um, next part is on the bottom, which is just the segment resistors for segment displays. On this breadboard down here, I had just two resistors on each anode, but this is not something you should do uh, on your finished project because uh, then the current is shared by all the segments that are on, basically. And if you have five segments on, then it's going to be a bit dim. And if you have one segment on, then it's going to be super bright. If you put a resistor on each segment, then um, they're all equally bright, which is nice. So, yeah. There's two jumper links down here. This um, uses seven jumper links and one botch wire up here um, to get this all on a single-sided PCB. Um, the resistors are all surface mount, everything else is through hole. So next thing is the ISP programming header here, I chose the 10 pin header. This, this is just more convenient for me because all my cables terminate into this. And as you might see, yeah I put it in the wrong way initially so I had to go in there with a pair of snips and just make a cutout so I can plug my programming cable in here. They also put a bit of captain tape on this side so I see which which way is the proper way. Next is the processor um, at Mega 32.8 PU. I think it's, yeah, it's 32.8 PU. Um, really, really great chip. Tons of features. 32K flash. There's like everything you would ever need in there. Um, there's a little jumper in here. This is actually the next thing. This um decides whether well with the process we are using there's um, basically two ways you can do it one works at 30 degrees bath temperature and one is at 38 degrees and the times vary and this if this jumper is set it will go for rapid processing 38 and if you pull it out it will be 30 uh, degrees so i don't expect that i'm ever going to use 38 degrees because the 30 degrees process it works better it's just it's slower um, but just in case I ever want to do this I put this jumper in here um, so next there's a capacitor that is on this chip on the AREF pin um, just to stabilize the reference voltage this uses a 1.1 volt internal reference and I'll talk about that in a second when I talk about this um, next here, there's a BC547 transistor, wait, uh, shoot the camera up, um, that is to trigger the relay that's going to activate the uh, 150 watt heater that's going to heat up the water bath. And up here is a 7805 with its two capacitors next to it. 
Um, this has its own regulator because it needs a fairly constant voltage to operate this. Um, uh, this analog front end here. Yeah. This is not a resistor, it's actually a jumper link. And here's the reference diode, which is just a, a 1N4007. Um, and you can get away with using a regular diode like this, although it is fairly temperature dependent and all sorts of other things. But for the accuracy we need, this should be just about fine. Um, this is actually still fed by a resistor on the bottom. Where is the resistor feeding it? Should be that or that one. Um, instead of a JFN current source, I yeah. Well, it's going to do the job. Um, yeah, and this is part of this reference with the um, resistor and the diode is part of uh, a current reference with this transistor and one of those four op amps that are in here and this PT100 is what the current is passed through. And then basically one differential amp takes that out from from this resistor chain with the sense resistor and all and um, amplifies it by a factor of about 30 and then there is another diff amp that compares it to a voltage that is set here this is a calibration pot over here um, and I'll just power this up here We'll just have to set the power supply, clamp this down, reset the focus, so that I can demonstrate how... Oh, crap. The 5 volt power lead actually fell off. So I've got to resolder this quickly. Not a problem at all. It's just going to make this video slightly longer. Should I, I should probably zoom in on this. Yeah, that's better. I'm actually going to put proper power leads on this once it's once the box is done and I know what power supply I'm going to use for this. It's good enough for testing. It's not a very good joint though. So I'm going to connect this to um got the power supply set for 8 volts. So now this day displays 30. Um, and if I take this into my hand, it will. Well, at least it should. I need to heat it up with a lighter. Work a bit faster. Hmm, this looks like something is wrong. So yeah, this is the calibration pot. I can just calibrate it around. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> I've got your problem right here. I was heating up the wrong PT100. This is the PT100 from this other thing over here. PT100 of this thing is hanging over here. So oh, yeah, now it reacts. <laughs> right. Um, so I'll just set this to 
30. Well, a bit finicky. So to 27, and if I touch it, right, it starts climbing. So yeah, what you do to um, calibrate this, this is actually, this has a linear function um, inside it. And the only thing you're setting is basically um, the analog voltage that's subtracted here. So you set, you put this in ice cold water and then you set this to zero. And then because the linear curve is uh, doesn't really depend on uh, what you set here. It it will hit the temperature just right. Um, but you could also do like two three point calibration um, with this. You just have to um, change the parameters in in this chip. There's actually a parameter called linear m and linear b, which is just a uh, uh, two factors in a linear equation that uh, sort of convert the uh, ADC value to the temperature. So, yeah. Um, this is a quick overview over this completed project. And I'll probably insert a couple of clips of it in the box and um, it working after this. This is the complete thing now sitting in a 3D printed enclosure that I made. Um, very simple, just has a cutout here for the display and just a hole down here that I didn't even design in CAD, I just drilled it in there um, to get the uh, PT100, so two power leads that are going to carry 12 volts in. Then also, the third wire um, is basically an open collector output for the whole thing, which means um, this is going to connect to a relay um, like this, but a larger automotive style relay that can switch a couple hundred watts at 12 volts. Um, needs Also it needs a flyback diode, that's very important. Um, so this basically would attach from here to the 12 volt um, input, and then once the this reaches below 30 degrees. Um, this is basically uh, the transistor. Transistor in here would would switch through, and this would click on, um, like. Let's just try this here. Um, flyback diode is in the right direction. I'll just twist this around here temporarily. Sit this down on here. So why isn't it turning on? Oh, it was just, it wasn't connected, right? This goes down here, and then I'll just use a clip like this. So now it says it's above 30 degrees, so it doesn't switch through. Um, I'll just cool this off by just passing some uh, just a stream of cold gas over it. 
off camera. Yeah, and there was a relay clicking on. Now it's cooled down fairly low. Let's put it here on camera again. Also, this isn't absolute temperature, it's not yet calibrated. Um, I'll just warm this up in my hand. And as soon as we reach 30 degrees, it should click off again. And there's also a jumper inside that I talked about before where you can set this to 38. Yeah. There it was. So, this, without actually trying for it, because the sample time is so quick, um, this will sort of do pulse width modulation for very brief. But that's not too bad. So yeah, this is the completed project. All it needs now is a 12 volt power supply and one of those automotive relays. Um, 